Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Three Dosha session. Today, our topic is sustainable performance and Merry Christmas. Um, I'll pass it on to my dad now. Thank you, Sachin. Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas to you, wherever you are. Thank you to our viewers dialing from India. I know it's late for you. Thank you for joining all the other participants as well. We're excited today to share with you on the day of Christmas, a topic that's near and dear to us, which is all about sustainable performance and sustainable. I, I, Sachin has a beautiful image here. Uh, Sachin, you wanna talk about uh, sustainable performance a bit before I dive in? Yeah, sure. So sustainable performance is what we know there's what performance is. There's two definitions of performance. There's like the performance is like when you're getting your test done or how good you're doing something. And there's also the performance that's like you're doing a play or something. The performance we're talking about today is like your uh, the ability and how good you can do something or how poorly you're doing something. And sustainable means that it's consistent. It's able to, it's able to be sustained, meaning that uh, it's not like one day you have really high performance. And the next day you're like low on performance. It's how, so you can stay consistent. And our goal is to figure out how we can balance the three greater elements, vata, pitta, and kapha also known as air, fire, and water. Again, the air element controls our thoughts. The fire elements is our actions and transformation. And the water element is our reflection and grounding. So how you can keep those three elements in balance to have sustainable performance. And as you can see in the picture, one there's a person with a sad face, and then there's someone with a happy face. And there's like a chart going up and down and the goals to keep it like sustained and at, at the same pace instead of having a lot of fluctuations. And you can see there's also a to-do list with checks and that performance is showing that they're getting tasks done. So um, if you have any questions, we'll have questions at the end. So we're gonna first go over the presentation then we'll have an open Q&A. I'll pass it back to my dad now. Okay, great. Thank you, Sachin. All right, so let me do a quick recap of what we have always talked about in these Tridosha sessions, which is about how, how do we keep everything in balance back to what Sachin mentioned. So before we dive in, just a re rehash, re quick uh, update of what Tridoshas is all about. Tridoshas uh, is a theory based on each one of us, any one of us is built out of the same five elements. The five elements are space, air, fire, water, and earth. Here we're representing the Tridoshas of the body um, and the five elements are then broken down into three greater elements, the air, fire, and water, represented as white, red, and blue. And the air, fire, and water elements are what determine our biological states or our higher energies uh, in our body specifically. And just like our body, there's the three doshas of the mind or what are called the mana doshas, um, which are, again, built out of the same five elements and then broken down into three greater elements of air, fire, and water, or sattva, rajas, and tamas. Um, and the objective here is to understand that it is th these three greater elements, whether that's in your body or your mind, that are constantly moving, constantly making us go into different directions, and that is what keeps us in balance, and that is what keeps us out of balance. So if you wanna understand these concepts more, I encourage you to go look back at some of our videos, which go deeper into the details. But at the highest level, what we've always explained is that, that you always have a Tridosha's balance state, which is the orange star in the middle, which is actually the state that we were all born in. This is the state we were born in, in balance. Um, and what happens in life is as we grow up, as we become older or we start thinking that we understand the world, we start moving away from our balance state more into the air elements or the fire elements or the water elements. And it pulls us from our balance state into what we call an imbalance state, um, which are the yellow stars. And our objective always is to understand that it's very natural, very normal for us to move from our balance state to the imbalance state. But as long as we keep everything in balance and bring in the right elements of air, fire, and water, we should be able to bring ourselves back into the balanced state. Also wanted to highlight that the air element is what gives us all the awareness of what we do, the ideas, uh, the fire element gives us the action and the drive to get things done, and the water elements give us all the bonding experiences and the grounding that's needed. Again, I encourage you to look at some of the other previous videos if you wanna understand this more. Uh, but some great concept today that Sachin and I talked about was how do we talk about bringing all of these things in balance and then specifically around sustainable performance. 
Um, this, this chart just highlights, you know, it's one thing to keep your body in balance with the three elements we talk about. It's another to keep your mind in balance. So the objective is to first get your body in balance, then to get your mind in balance, and then combine the two so you have a purely pure three doshas balance state of both the mind, I'm sorry, the body, the mind, and the spirit all in balance. So, you know, today the topic is sustainable performance. And I want to take a little bit of time, talk about what that is and how we bring these elements into a very sustainable or a consistent performance level. But before we go into sustainable performance, let's talk about performance. And I think all of us think of performance as fire, the fire in us. Um, and these are the five elements you can see at the top, right? Space, air, fire, water, and earth. Um, fire is what makes us go through a transformation. It's the actions that we take. Once we've done something really big and taken a ton of action, do we realize that we have actually performed Performance is also something we all measure as, hey, that person performed really well. By a lot of actions they've taken that actually makes us feel that that person transformed from a current state or whatever state they were in into a bigger state or a higher state. And I think a lot of focus is around action, 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 and that is performance. And what I wanna do is I wanna talk about something about fire. And I took this image specifically from the US Department of Fire. And I was thinking about, you know, what does it take for our fire to consistently keep performing or sustain? How does a fire sustain itself? And if you read the US Department of Fire, it talks about how, you know, you need for fire to always consistently keep burning, you need air, fire, and fuel, or I should say oxygen, heat, and fuel. And specifically, you know, you need all three elements for it to burn. Um, for the fire, obviously heat starts it, but you constantly need the air, the oxygen, and you also need the fuel. The fuel is what comes from the earthy elements. So all the branches, all the trees, all the leaves, the dry leaves are all coming from the earth elements. Um, and, you know, the fire people talk about in order to eliminate fire, if you can eliminate the fuel, or if you can eliminate the oxygen or the heat, the fire will submerge. And I think the point is, if we just focus on, you know, keeping the fire going consistently in a sustainable way, the way this fire is represented, I think we'll understand what sustainable performance is. I also thought I'd take a different metaphor today and take a different analogy of how something that we all know consistently performs or sustainably performs. And here we're talking about an old tree. This is a beautiful image of a banyan tree. For any of you that know banyan trees, banyan trees live for thousands of years. Um, and the beauty of a banyan tree is it's consistently performing for it to get there to be a thousand year old. Now, this is a tree that's probably been around for long, long, long time. But if you think about it, it's consistently performing and it's keeping its fire alive. So how does a tree keep its fire alive? Here, the tree is constantly, every day, it doesn't matter if it's hot, cold, snowy, drought year, flood year, it's constantly performing by growing. It's constantly doing its thing. It's keeping its fire going by providing nutrition to its branches, to the leaves. It gets enough nutrition up to the leaves for it to turn into leaves in the springtime, fall in the fall time, protect it in the heat, also in the cold weather. And it's consistently doing that by staying in balance with all the five elements. It's obviously using all the water, the water is needed for it to move the nutrition up. It's staying grounded to the earth element. And within the earth element, it's actually taking all of its nutrition coming out of the earth element that is needed for it to feed the roots to then feed the plant, I'm sorry, to then feed its branches up to the leaves. And you can see the fire is constantly using the fuel through the water and the earth element. But the fire is also constantly using the air element and the space element. So it's using the air because as it's going through photosynthesis, it's absorbing the air through the carbon dioxide that it's taking in and it's constantly producing oxygen and moving 
and doing things within the, the, the photosynthesis into the leaves, that's making it go through a sustainable performing way. That is how it grows every year. And it doesn't matter what happens in terms of a drought year or a flood year, it's consistently using all five elements for it to grow. Okay, so hopefully this is making some sense in terms of sustainable performance. And then I thought, hey, let's take the same analogy that we took with the tree and start to think about how do we perform in a sustainable, consistent fashion. So again, I kept the analogies up at the top, the fire, in order for fire to consistently keep going, you need heat, oxygen, and fuel. The same way as the tree is constantly staying in balance with all the five elements, we ought to think about how do we stay in balance, specifically using the five elements. So let's take a little bit of time and talk about how we use the air element or oxygen elements. Now we've talked about in the previous videos how air gives us all the ideas. And guess what? Air is always there for us, right? The ideas are always there in the environment. Now we perform sometimes and we think we've performed really well, but then we have new ideas that come in and say, hey, you know what? I can take my performance to the next level. And that comes from ideas. Say you're a runner and then you decide, you know what? I'm doing so great at running. Now I wanna be a triathlete. I wanna do swimming. I wanna do something else. So are you keeping yourself in balance as you're performing? Are you getting new performance goals through the ideas and the environment that's coming at you? But it's important to keep in mind as you're performing to not take in too much oxygen because the moment you start taking in too much, meaning you start saying, hey, I wanna be a triathlete. I also wanna be a, I also wanna be able to do all sorts of unnatural things very fast, very quickly. Uh, and what's gonna happen is your fire is gonna start burning with the oxygen way too fast and you're gonna burn yourself out. So the direction of what we do and what we wanna take comes from the air element. How much we take in is in our control. How much we wanna perform is in our control. And that is what we mean by keeping the fire and the air element in balance. Let's focus on the right a little bit, talk about the fuel that the fire needs. So how do we get the fuel for our performance levels from the water and the earth elements? We've talked about this in some of our previous videos that, you know, everything on the earth elements or the water elements is what gives us grounding, what gives us reflection, right? So, and this is a very slow process. This is, you know, some people call it kapha or laziness, but I think there's something to reflect upon here. It's only during the laziness or the, the self-reflective moments where we're actually getting a lot of growth. Let me explain that a little bit. So the fuel is a very slow and steady generative process. As we go through our performance levels and we achieve something, we actually are leaving a memory footprint in ourselves of how we did when we performed really well at something, right? So for example, you know, if you performed really well at something, you will remember how well you felt at that time or how you how it made you feel and how you wanna do it again. And that's all great because you needed the fuel at that time, you consumed it, but you're also keeping a memory of how it's gonna take you to do something like that again. In the form of performance, it's important to have those self-reflective times because what you're doing during those self-reflective times is you're going slowly for the next fire that you're gonna burn. So in the analogy of a tree is the tree is constantly keeping its fuel in its roots. It's keeping enough of the leaves that fall as nutrition back into the roots. Just like that, when you're actually in your self-reflective slow and steady process, you're actually thinking even in your dullest moments, even in your laziest moments of what you really want to do. And it's important to use that to your fuel. And the quality of fuel is what matters in that time. If during those slow, steady, lazy times, you're taking in bad fuel, bad thoughts, or bad types of things, then obviously your performance is going to get impacted. But if you're keeping the quality of that fuel good, you know that you're actually getting ready for that fuel that you need when you're not burning. So when you're not burning, you're actually generating this fuel for yourself, even in these slow, slow reflective moments. 
So keep that in mind and don't give up because just like a tree is constantly doing what it does, takes in the carbon dioxide, gives us back the oxygen, just the same way we're actually taking in the oxygen and giving the carbon dioxide back to the tree. So guess what? We're all performing in our own different ways. We're performing, the tree's performing, and we have a symbiotic relationship between ourselves and the tree in order for us to understand that we can also have a self-sustaining performance just like a tree does all the time in order for us to have a very good consistent performance level. So that was pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I wanted to just take a moment to explain how all of these things are all written um, in the Thidosha's theory. And if you are interested in understanding this more, it's about understanding that it's a very basic way of living. That's what we call the basics of living in balance, just like a tree is using all the five elements and keeping that in balance. You know, we could do the same thing of keeping our fire in balance with the air and the water elements. And if we just do that in life, I think we will consistently keep performing. We'll consistently see the same type of performance that a banyan tree does. And I can guarantee the guarantee any one of us, as long as we keep it in balance, can grow as vigorous, as beautiful as that banyan tree that you see in the middle with all sorts of beautiful branches and consistently stay performing for thousands, thousands of years in a tree, but for our lifetime, we can consistently stay performing at that level. So let me pause there um, and see such an, uh, if you have any questions or others have any questions and let me have you kind of take it to where everybody wants to take it. Yeah, so in simpler terms, you can think about it. Well, if we know the three elements, first let's start with the, the air element, your thoughts. That can also, it can make your sustainable performance high or low because your thoughts can interfere with everything. Like suppose Sri Yansh is preparing for an exam, right? And he's been working towards it every day, two hours every day. And then his thoughts are telling him like doubts maybe will kick in. Like, hey, I might fail or there's not even any point. The stuff I'm learning, I probably won't even use in the future. How will I even use math in the future? Like it's not even worth it. Those can, that can make him study less and that can get in between a sustainable performance. Or one thing that can happen is he can be overconfident and say, I don't even need to study. I have A's in all my classes. I'm so good. And that can also ruin the sustainable performance because then he would work less. Dude, I actually have an exam this Monday. How did you know? I don't know, it was just an example. But uh, if he can also say that like, he's overconfident and just says that like, I know so much that I don't even need to study that can also get in between sustainable performance. And then going to the fire element, um, our actions. If one day you just have so much desires and so many things you wanna do and you keep working and working and working and don't even sleep, you stay up, you don't even like, you, you skip events you have to go to because you're so fixated on one thing, you'll get burnt out. And then after you're, bur after you're burned out, you'll just be idle and you won't, you won't have enough energy to do anything. And that's also an issue because that's not sustainable performance. And then for our grounding and reflection, if you just keep doing stuff, but you're not thinking about why you're doing it or you don't reflect on it, like if dad is just doing these sessions over and over again and bringing out contact, but he's not reflecting and grounding on what's the bigger purpose, the greater purpose like we did a session on or why I'm actually doing this, what the future is going to look like, what I can improve on, what I can do better on. You need that reflection and grounding because if you don't, you'll just keep going without any stopping and I'll get in between your sustainable performance. So I hope that made sense. Um, if there are any questions, you can ask your questions now. And I think Carl is here. Welcome, Carl. And Varun is back. So thanks for joining. How are you doing, Sag? I'm good. How are you? Uh, can you give me more in depth on this, uh, uh, what you were talking about? I came in in the middle, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. We were talking uh, about sustainable performance and yeah. how you can use the three greater elements. The air, air element controls your thoughts. The fire element is your actions. The water element is like your grounding and reflection. And how you can keep, if you keep those three elements in balance, you can have sustainable performance. So I can ask you a question. Do you have any, like, uh, do you have any experiences where you've had sustainable performance and how did you like keep that sustainable performance uh yes um i try to stay, uh, keep my focus you know what i'm trying to accomplish 
And, you know, as I heard with your father and you had said earlier that, uh, you know, things doubt will creep in, you know, all that will creep in, you know, um, then you said, why I'm doing it, excuses will jump in, you know, uh, why should I do it? Is it going, am I really going to do this or do that? Those kind of things creep in, but you have to have your focus, determination, and willingness to do, get your goal accomplished. You know, I like that sustainable perform. I like what you and your father were saying a while ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I love what you said, Carl. Uh, actually, it's such a, give me one sec. Mm -hmm. um, you said focus. You said kind of mm -hmm. keep that, you know, doubts are going to creep in and the focus is going to kind of get distracted. And I think that's kind of the fire element, right? Yeah. The focus and the intensity comes from the fire element. The doubts are coming from the grounding that's basically trying to put you down to say, you know what, maybe, maybe it's not going to happen or maybe it is. But as long as we keep that fire element in, in going the entire time, we should be able to keep that focus and intensity that's needed. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sachin, you were going to say something too. Yeah, I was just going to say that I, I pretty much what you were going to say. I was going to say the same thing that I agree with it. And as well, Carl is a ordained minister at a church, at his local church. So feel free to drop your knowledge whenever you want, Carl. We can learn, we can all learn a lot from everyone. Thank so, you. Are there any, any qu other questions from anyone else about sustainable performance and, or any, any questions in general? It doesn't have to be on this topic about the three elements, about exams, like your exam seance. I don't know how I knew that, but just an example. And yeah. Actually, if I can ask Varun, Varun, are you there? Yeah. Had you realized that you've had sustainable performance throughout college, like when you were a freshman at University of Washington and now you're a senior? Have you noticed that sometimes there have been fluctuations or have you just been sustainably performing every year? I see, yeah, there has been um, some like uh, setbacks and then sometimes I just get back up from those setbacks and it's been great. It's been a great four years so far. Um, I mean, like looking into like, uh, like um, starting my freshman year, I was taking several like readout classes and um, I was like, oh, I can't get through this, this is uh, very tough. But then I kept on persevering and now I'm here today, uh, graduating in a couple months. Awesome. Do you think that it's, and you can even say no, if you want to, you don't have to just agree with me, but do you think that like the three elements have been a part, like before you even learned about it, do you think that you've always been keeping yourself in balance with the three elements? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. So we can see that in everyone's lives, the three elements are always there. It's going to be with you right when you were born, you started doing actions and Pretty much it's all about keeping it a balance and then you don't really have to worry about much but don't also get so don't have so much don't have too much fire on trying to stay balanced because then that's also an issue it doesn't have to be perfect it's like almost impossible to stay like in balance all the time because there's always going to be situations that can throw us off or like get medics mad or sad so like if someone passes away you can't be like oh i'm not going to cry i need to stay in balance like that's just yeah, or like if something bad happens, if something breaks, if you drop your phone and it shatters, you can't be like, I'm not going to get mad. I need to stay in balance. So don't get so fixated on that. It's just working towards it every day. And it, no, none of us are perfect. Um, even my dad, same with me here. And yeah, and so really no one is perfect. But yeah, it's just about working towards it every day and trying to make yourself a better person. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Such an even your dad's not perfect. I like that. That's um, for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to take a little bit of a moment, Varun. You said something which was very good. So let's just let's just dive into it because I've been there and I was just thinking as you were talking, you know, you said, and let me just kind of put the slide up so we can kind of bring it back and, and make sure that all of this stuff is making sense. So you said, hey, you were taking some weed out classes, you know, and you were having some doubts set in. And I think a lot of that is great, but you have to understand that your air element, which is all about getting the awareness. You had the awareness to say, you know what, I am gonna get through this no matter what. You had the awareness to say, I'm obviously here to get my education and I'm gonna stay at it. And there's, you're in an environment actually at college where you're given a lot of this, you know, 
um, knowledge that's coming at you, even though you're in these weed out classes, as you called it. And you wake up every day and you're taking action, right? There's enough fire in your belly to say, I'm obviously trying to go for an education here. So I'm going to get my degree and I'm going to execute to it, right? Um, and then there's obviously this doubt that you said kicks in, right? This is the inertia. The inertia is going to kick in. Say you get a bad test or a bad score or a bad grade. And the inertia comes in and it starts grounding you. You just want to be like, you know what? Why am I even doing this? Like, I'm, maybe I'm not good at these classes. And I, it's happened to me. I've had a, you know, some classes where I just didn't do well. And that, that experience bonds you into that, you know, state of saying, you know what? This is not good. And you start getting bonded into that low state. And I think if you bring all of these three elements back in balance, by that I mean, don't get bonded by or bounded by the limited experience of that one exam because you know you've had multiple other exams where you've done really well so pull yourself out of this you know kapha state or the lazy state when you get bonded with this inertia that's sitting on top of you go back into your action state and make sure that there's awareness of what you're doing so the best way to get out of this bonded inertia state is to have a desire to say, you know what, my desire is going to lead me back towards working harder, right? Studying harder. And that desire is going to move you towards action. So the inertia is going to move you towards action. And when you're in action, it's important to be connected to the awareness of why you're there to keep fueling that action. So keep fueling that fire with the awareness of why you're even there in the first place, which is about getting knowledge rather than grades or you know, you're there to get an education, which is all about knowledge. And as long as the awareness is there, I think all these three elements kind of keep you back in balance. So hopefully that kind of helps you know, visualize how all these things come into play. So let me pause there and see if there's other questions or other thoughts. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you so much for the uh, comprehensive um, or like describing this in terms of the uh, diadoshas. Yep. Other to, questions, other thoughts? I have a few thoughts. I want to quickly add that I think a lot of people associate the three elements as always good things. But like, for example, guffa can be good or bad. Like it's not always just laziness. It can also be like sleeping, which is also growth. And then your thoughts, not like, it's not like, oh, if I have vata, that means I'm good. Or like if I'm really high on my air element, it could be bad thoughts or good thoughts, right? It can be doubts. It could be thoughts that you don't want, or it could be good thoughts that can help you become or reach a goal or become a better person. And then also for actions, you could be, you can have a, someone can say, I have so much of the fire elements. So I should be, I'm amazing. But if they're, I don't know, selling drugs or something, and that's not something good. So it all depends. On, it's not always a good thing. It depends on what you're doing and what you're trying to get out of it. And also, um, so it depends. You could have, or suppose, we associate getting an education as something good, right? So that can be an example of Varun has the pitta to go and finish high school and then finish college and then graduate and get a job. Um, so that, it, it, I just want to throw that out there that like, it's not always good. It can be good or bad. And I think one thing that people always associate Gatha with is laziness is actually also growth. And I know tamas also is also like you're lazy and you don't want to do stuff or you're idle, but it can also be growth like sleeping or, or like just like relaxing because a lot of the times when you're relaxing, your best thoughts come or when you're just sitting out in nature and that's also kapha and your grounding time or just like going. I know sometimes my dad just goes on the grass like barefoot and just feels the grass and feels the breeze. That's the whole concept of the therapeutic grounding which has become really popular and a lot of people have started doing it. So I just wanted to say that, but anyone else with any other questions, comments, thoughts, anything, feel free to share right now. I kind of want to ask about um, the idea of free will over here, because uh just like you talked about the tree in uh the, the abandoned tree which like lives for a thousand of years well it, it, it usually doesn't have like a free will that we do you know so we i think we do have uh the ability to like 
maintain um, the elements. So do you think that other organisms also have these um, sort of qualities or, or uh, another way to frame it is uh, if we do have these qualities, do we have free will as others do? Hmm. That's such a great question, Suyansh. I love that question. Free will. I love the word free will because that's something we humans have more than a tree, like you said, the banyan tree, right? But there are certain things that are part of free will. So let me kind of go a little bit deeper and explain, and please feel free to ask questions as I explain this. I think what makes us different from all other living organisms like plants and animals is that we actually have what you said, which is free will. And our free will is based on our choice of what we wanna do. But that choice comes from the awareness, right? Now you could argue, do others have the kind of awareness and the thoughts that we do? You know, do trees and animals have the you know, types of thoughts? I would argue they have thoughts, but they don't have as much of the space and air element as we are given the ability to do that. So let's take a tree and then let's make the analogy back to the humans. So a tree has an, anal has an experience and that's why kapha is in the experience stage. So a tree has an experience to, to, to say, you know what, there was a drought year and what did I do that drought year for me to sustain that year? It knew what it needed to do to keep its resources together in order for it to grow that year, right? And it kind of kept some experience based, we call it vasana, or it's called an experience that determines how you operate the next time when you see the same thing. So another drought year comes, that tree knows what it needs to do to sustain that year. Now, let's take that same analogy to a human. We know from our previous experiences, just like a tree, when we were in a bad situation or we didn't do well, what we need to do the next time to do better, right? But we also have one additional element beyond a tree, that free will that you talked about, which is the awareness above and beyond what a tree or an animal has, where we have the free will to say, hey, not only do I just wanna survive, I can actually take this to the next level. I can take it 10 levels higher, 50 levels higher, because I have the ideas, the thoughts all in balance and I have a higher purpose. And I think this is where humans have the ability to go bigger in a much more profound fashion because we have you know, the intellectual honesty, the higher purpose and an intellect at a much different level than just experience space, which is based on the water element. So I don't know if any of that made sense, but let me pause there and see if uh, any of that made any sense or resonated with you. Um, yeah, kind of. You probably can see this full of sto so full story to um for me to you know piece all of that together. Yeah. Great question though. I ponder on that question all the time. Yeah. And it's the things like uh recently I've been experiencing things where I and I'm reading stories too, where uh, all of these philosophical topics of free will and you, when you talked about okay you have to um in your experience you have to do sustain with like sustenance could be you know uh, the sustenance is our will right we want to sustain but is if that's predetermined with our senses and all um well then how do we how do we have the right to do free will and sustenance i mean how in the sense not ethically how, but like how are we into existence, like conceptually? Anyway. Yeah, no, I'm reflecting on your question a little bit. And I think you asked a very deep question. Yeah. <laughs> and let me let me try and explain, see if any of this um, any of this works. So you said something about, I think you said destiny. Is that what I heard? Kind no, of what you I said? I did not say destiny, I just said, that you know when we are talking about free will oh sorry when we are talking about sustenance mm -hmm. uh sustaining our performance that our that's our wish to you know we want to sustain our performance but and so i was just pondering okay it's good to learn about all these things but is there actually a way that we can um 
control uh, all these elements for us if we do not have free will. So that's basically what I was wondering. Is if you want to sustain it, we need to be able to maintain it somehow. But then if you don't have free will, how is how that going to happen? Yeah, that, okay. Thank you for explaining that a little bit more. We always have free will. So you know, like you said, that's the beauty of the human, human mindset, right? And human mindset would say we have free will to take and all of that sits in action. The actions we take is our free will, right? So you're asking, how do you bring this back into the free will? So the theory of, the theory of um, you know, like even though you've had previous experiences that may not have been so good on certain things, you always have free will to say, do I wanna go down that path or not, right? Um, and if you, if you focus your free will around your actions with the higher purpose or the awareness, you feel like, hey, at least if I'm aware of every action that I'm taking with the free will based on my thoughts and my ideas and my awareness, that is to me your free will. You could choose at that free will to take the wrong action because you may not have had the greatest of the ideas or the right ideas or the higher, or you weren't intellectually honest with yourself at that point, right? Or you weren't necessarily trying to do things with a higher purpose and it was more driven by something else, by the environment around you. And you would say, that's also free will. I made that choice. So the action that you took based on what you took in from the air element to me is what determines as much of our actions we will. I don't know if that made sense or uh, it kind of resonated with you. Yeah, that's a bit of it. Um, and maybe explain the question more. When I talked about the tree, uh, what I was wondering about, okay, so we can maintain, uh, let's say we have free will and somehow we can maintain these elements for sustainments. That tree probably does not have a free will, but the you explain very well how it does um, to sustain itself. So that's okay. good. And I think it's really a topic to discuss um, in depth and a pretty fun one also. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. The tree does not have as much free will. You're right. But the tree is doing its thing, it keeping things in balance it's for it to sustain. Yeah. So I think you've caught it pretty well, which is it's sustaining. That's all it's doing but it doesn't necessarily have the free will, which is the ability that we humans have a lot more, um, but that's spot on, yep. Good okay. question. We can probably go seek um, and wonder about philosophy later. <laughs> exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, Sumit? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I say something? Yeah, please. Yeah, in your life, sometimes the things don't work the way you want it. Many times at work or in your daily life, you see a day comes which is really bad for you. You have problem after problem after problem and after problem and you are in a mess. What to do at that time? What to do at that time? It had, I mean, I had those experiences in my life when I was working in a construction industry and we had problem after the problem. And at the almost towards the end of the day, I'll be just sitting on problems only. And that time I'll just uh, stop my work and go early, maybe half an hour early from work. And in the morning, I'll come back with a fresh, I'll come back early to work with a fresh mind. And I look at all those problems and believe me, if I had done those solutions a day before that would have been possibility that I may have committed wrong. But in the morning, when I had a fresh mind and was looking at uh, problems in a very sort of a patient's way and uh, bringing back all my energy and thought and wisdom, whatever I have, I, I, uh, uh, I experienced that those solutions in the morning with a fresh thought were much better than what I could have done it previous evening. That's what my experience has been in life. Yeah, that's even uh, recently, I thought I was like Jeff Bezos or something, but I, I got up at like 4.40 to do some homework. I went to sleep early and then the other day I got up at like five and I realized that like in the morning, 
it's always like, cause you have a fresh mind, you remember stuff better, you do your work better. I just like waking up early. So I think that I agree with you on that, Aldaji. Thanks. Good, thank you. Yeah. 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 And Sachin, you said it too, right? Which is you need the kapha element. You need yeah. the thamas. You need the sleep because it's that sleep. So, you know, it's giving you grounding. It's, it's actually a regulator or a controller, whatever you want to call it. It's regulating your fire and your air. Now, when the days when you have a lot of problems and you're thinking about all those problems, you have a lot of ideas of how everything is going wrong and you're obviously doing all your actions. But if you stay within that same day, and just do too much, you know, you can actually get yourself burnt out. It goes back to what Sachin you said, which is if you actually sleep over it, control it, regulate it, ground yourself, come back the next day with a fresh thoughts or fresh ideas, you can actually solve it much better. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. That, that was really good. Yeah, I, I just want... And if there's a you probably have your uh phone or your there's two computers on at the same time you either are on your phone and your laptop at the same time and that's causing uh the echo to come in while you try to fix that any other questions or you can type in your question if that's easier for you on the chat we can read it i think if you just joins on the yeah. it should be fine so one thing I wanted to say was uh, we were at um, um, Joshua Tree National Park, and so there were um, these uh, gardens, Choya Cactus Garden, and it was interesting to hear how lack of, for instance, um, kappa can also be sustainment. So for instance, water, they usually expect um, you know, 10 inches of water. And they were talking about how this year they had only two inches of water and yet the cactus were, cacti were thriving. So I think it's another instance kind of similar to what Sachin was saying is sometimes a lack of can also lead to sustainment. And in this case, the cacti were growing, you know, um, uh, well and didn't look like that they were, you know, drought tolerant, you know. Water, yeah, and, and they also kind of know how to utilize that two inches of water to, to the max of efficiency. So it's the top buds that actually help uh, the cacti grow and the bottom starts to brown out or, you know, die. And it's just amazing how, you know, life in itself can find a way to uh, continue to grow in those kind of instances, even with a lack of water, for instance, or kappa. I mean, I love that analogy, by the way. And I think let's let's take that analogy and just try to see how that applies to us as humans, right? In our free will thinking. Like, like the cactus knows, the banyan tree knows, hey, this year I'm only gonna get two inches versus 10 inches, but it figures out within that two inches how to thrive. I think we do the same thing actually in the water state, in this guffa stage where we have a lot of inertia. So for example, there could be so many problems in our lives, it could be money related, it could be health related, it could be, I don't know, some other types of things, problems that happen and it grounds us. It basically just brings us down and, and puts us in that environment where you know you've only got two inches of rain and you only have so many resources to get you through. But like you said, even in those environments, based on our previous experiences or based on our in, innate desire to thrive, we're gonna find out a way to get out of it, right? No matter how tough the situation is. So like Sachin said, everybody thinks of kapha and tamas as bad things, not necessarily. These are actually some of the best moments that are gonna shape you and define who you are. And in the case of a cactus or a good human being, it, it separates the living from the non-living, if you will right? Some cactus are going to die with those two inches, but the ones that are going to thrive are going to thrive in a way that they're going to know how to live not only in that two inches, but in a flourishing fashion when they come out of this state of this kapha tamas state, right? So again, it's, it's bringing, you know, you could be in this yellow star down here in that extreme state of inertia, extreme state of grounding, 
But if you can survive here, come back into action and bring air back in, you know you're gonna thrive when you come back in. I don't know if that's made sense or uh, it applies. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. That explanation works. Yeah, thank you. Other okay, questions, so, other thoughts? Yeah. Uh, okay, guys, so you guys have been talking about um, sleep and importance. So I'm gonna go ahead and sleep right now. It's 11 p.m. for me. Bye, Excellent. guys, thank you for this. Bye. Thank um, you. Hey, Suyash, always, always good to see you, Suyash. Thank you for joining us. We try to do yeah. it earlier, but uh, but we'll try. I think some of the PST times yeah. when they change will hopefully bring you back. But thank you for joining us, and thanks for your attentiveness, Bye. even though so late, and thanks for the great questions. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Good Bye. luck on your exam. Thank you. All right. Well, are there any other questions? If there aren't, we could wrap it up or actually any plans for Christmas? Anyone can share if they want. Sachin, you may want to stop the recording and then we can just have our chat. How's that? See if sure. there's any other questions and then we can go back to our yeah. chat. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video. And if you have any questions, you can put that in the comment section. Um, Merry Christmas and have a great day.